group of islanders spending a 10 day holiday in the Spanish resort of Fuengirola decided to go on a whole day's coach trip to the Rock of Gibraltar. I say rock because that's all it is really, just one giant piece of rock which incidentally will fit into the size of the Isle of Wight 24 times. So it really is pretty small. A lot of people think it's an island, but it isn't. It's a peninsula being joined to the Spanish mainland just north of Gibraltar's only airport. In fact, the main road connecting it with Spain runs right through the middle of Gibraltar's runway, so holding up traffic during takeoff and landings. Many countries have fought over the sovereignty of the rock, but it wasn't until King Charles VI of France had died that his daughter, Isabella, handed it over to the British Empire in 1501, and since then it has remained crown property. That's why you see so many things which remind you of Britain back home. Firstly, they drive on the same side of the road as us. Their high street shops have familiar names. Their policemen dress like ours. And even their post boxes are red. On our arrival at the rock, a customary group photograph was taken of all the islanders who came on the trip. Next we all transferred to another coach for a guided tour around the rock. Our first stop was Europe Point to see its Trinity House Lighthouse, which is the only lighthouse outside of the United Kingdom that Trinity House still maintains. Just off the coast lies the wreck of the New Flame, a Panamanian vessel which collided with an oil tanker in August 2007. She was holed amidships and now partially rests on a submerged reef. Also from this point we can see the north coast of Africa some 18 miles away. Nearby is the mosque of Our Lady of Europe, its chapel dating back to 1462. From here we start climbing the winding road up the side of the rock and get panoramic views of Gibraltar's harbour, which now accommodates both naval vessels and cruise liners. The majority of the population, some 28,000, live in these high-rise flats, all built on reclaimed land. Further up, we enter the fenced-off nature reserve, where we encounter the menacing antics of the famous Barbary apes. As soon as we stopped, they were climbing all over our coach and looking for items to steal from its passengers. These animals are not really apes as such, but tailless monkeys. They're the only free roaming primates in Europe. Further on, we reach the St. Michael's Caves, which date back to Roman times. During the Second World War, these caves were used as emergency hospitals storerooms for ammunition and sleeping quarters for the servicemen stationed on the rock. Another cave called the Cathedral Cave had been changed into an area for concerts, ballet, drama and other presentations. You can just see in the gloomy light seating area and stage. With the tour over we gather as a group in Casemate Square once used for public executions, but now a thriving place for most of Gibraltar's nightlife. Lastly, we board our coach again and bid the rock a fond farewell. <laughs>